This is Django Rips, a podcast for learning web application development in Python using the Django web framework. We explore all of Django's features to equip you with the knowledge to build your own web app. I'm your host, Matt Lehman. Episode 1, Get to Know Django. Hello, welcome to the first episode of Django Rips. Since this is the first episode, I want to take a bit of time to explain what we're going to do on this podcast who this is for, who I am, the format, all of that stuff. To start with, let's talk about who this is for. Django Rips is a podcast specifically targeted for beginners new to Django. I expect that you don't have any particular Django experience. You've never done this before. You're coming at this brand new, and that's totally awesome. That's exactly who I have in mind. I also think that this could be useful for experienced users, perhaps to get a refresher to learn something new, learn some new corner of the framework that you may have missed in your initial read through. I do have to make a prerequisite though. I do expect people to understand basic Python syntax because I'm gonna describe some code by audio. And if you can't understand what Python is or or the basic structure of the language itself, you're gonna have a really hard time. So that's that's my only prerequisite to this. I don't expect you to have uh, prior web knowledge or anything of that nature, just Python. So who am I? As I said in the intro, my name is Matt Lehman, and I am a software developer. I've been doing software development since 2006, and I've been doing Django specifically for about five years or over five years at this point. I've done all sorts of software in the past, and I am very much a avid programmer. I love to just do this kind of stuff for my free time. I write a lot on my website, and uh, I'm excited to share with you a bit of knowledge that I have developed over the years and learn along the way, because as I prepare these episodes, I will also be making sure I do my homework. So I'm hoping to advance my own knowledge in this whole process. So the format of the show, what does this look like? Django Riffs is an educational podcast. We are focused on teaching you Django. And this is, I guess, what is it not? Django Riffs is not meant to be an interview show or a Django news show. If you are looking for that, there are great options out there. In particular, I'd recommend you check out Django Chat with Will Vincent and Carlton Gibson. They have a great show already that covers exactly that kind of approach if you're looking for that part of Django. I am, as we go through this process, going to take a a top-down approach to teaching. There are multiple styles for learning. I had to pick one, so I'm going to take an approach which starts from an overview and works down into the details. The alternative approach is a bottom-up approach where I could teach you all of the little bits and then start wiring those things together, connecting them. But that is not the approach that I like to teach. And so I want to give you the basic idea so you understand the structure of the framework. And then we'll get deeper and deeper as we go along. As well, each episode is devoted to a single topic in the framework. There's a lot of concepts to learn in Django. It is a big framework. And I don't want to overwhelm you. So I'm going to make the episode focused on a particular topic so that you can absorb that one piece, have some time to digest it before the next episode comes out. Additionally, the format of the show will include code examples. I'm going to go through the challenge of trying to describe code through audio. We'll see how that works out. I've heard it can be quite challenging. So will uh, I will sharpen my skills there and hopefully do a good job of presenting that to you in a way that's understandable. But if the audio does prove to be difficult to follow for some of those code parts, I am going to have detailed show notes for each episode in case you miss something or want to refer back to the details. Those will be available on the internet. So let's dive into our first topic. And the topic today is what is Django? What does it do? How does it fit into the web application ecosystem? That's what we're trying to answer. So let's start with the first piece. What is Django? Django pitches itself as a web framework. I think we need to break that down into both of its constituent pieces. First, the web part. Presumably, if you're here listening to this, because it's because you've heard of Django as a tool for building websites, and that is exactly what it's for. It is things that you might access with your browser. It is also possible to use Django to power mobile applications as the source of data that those applications might produce when you're viewing them. Django is used in many big 
websites, some that you've probably heard of. For example, Instagram is powered by Django. Pinterest is powered by Django. My own employer, probably lesser known to you, is, is Doctor on Demand. We do telemedicine, uh, also powered by Django. So lots of great services that are out there that all use Django under the hood. So let's look at the second part of this. It's a framework. What, is, what does that mean? What does a framework mean? We typically compare a framework to a software library when we're talking about code. Let's start with a library. A library is code that you bring into your room project and you call the code. Maybe there's a function that's there that your code is calling that has some specific purpose. A good example might be something like the requests library. If you're trying to do an HTTP request and, and calling some external website, um, you can use request and call that. That would be a library. A framework, on the other hand, is something that has put structure in place already for you and calls your code. You are filling in the blanks for what the framework is going to do. It's a, a little mind-bending when you really think about it, I guess, but uh, it works by having enough structure in place. So let's, let's try and pick an analogy that might help tease us out. And I'm going to stretch an analogy here, so it, it may not work for you, but it's the best I could come up with. You might think of an analogy like framing a house. When a house is framed out, the foundation is laid, poured, concrete, whatever, and the lumber is already put into place into the structure of the future home. And in that context, what is remains to be done is all of the stuff that goes on top of that frame, insulation, walls, paint, etc. If we contrast this perhaps with the more basic elements of this, like concrete and raw lumber, that, that's the framing that I think might help to think about this. So a framework is more like the foundation and framed out house, where a, as a library might be considered more like the raw materials used to build a house. So let's move on and think about what Django actually does. What does this framework do? And I want to start by answering this question by looking at how browsers actually work, because I think that's going to illuminate where Django fits into the equation. So when you're working with a web browser, you are making requests to some website and expecting responses back. Those responses might come in the form of web pages, they might be videos, they might be images. How does that work? Um, I'm going to throw some terms at you. Hopefully you've had some exposure to these. They might be brand new to you, so I will include links to them in the show notes that you can go do your own homework on them if you're interested to dive deeper in. But prepare for some acronyms, which I will explain. So it starts with URLs. You're probably familiar with URLs. That's something like mattlayman.com, uh, wikipedia.org, etc. URLs stand for uniform resource locators, and that's a big fancy term to mean a place on the internet where you can find something. So when you type in a URL like wikipedia.org, your browser is receiving an instruction to go to that place and return back a response. So the way it does that is with something called HTTP, which is the Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And that's a lot of words that is for a simpler concept than it sounds, but it's basically a format to describe how your browser talks to some other site on the internet and gets a response from that. So HTTP has a bunch of built-in kind of commands or verbs that are with them. And one of the most common ones is the get command, get method. So if you're visiting a website, you're really saying in HTTP, get mywebsite.com. But that's not really how the internet works. Underneath, when computers are talking to each other, they don't know the alphabet. They don't know English. They don't know any of those concepts. Those are just letters and characters. So, And computers really work with numbers and bits and binary and all that stuff. And, it, and so those things, those names, need to be translated into something meaningful so that two computers can communicate with each other. And this happens through the domain name system, or DNS. So your browser starts with a request. You type in the URL that you want to go to, and it has to do that translation from the name that you know into the address that is meaningful to a computer. 
Uh, this address is called an IP address. It stands for Internet Protocol, and it's a number that is a well-defined format that networks can use to communicate with each other. So after your browser has checked with a DNS system, a DNS server, it will ask that server and it will say, hey, what is the IP address of this domain name, this URL that I'm looking up? And eventually through a chain of servers, if it's not known at the one you're asking, it will get back that number. And finally, it'll be able to make the request out over the internet and to connect to the real machine. And at the end of that IP address road is an actual server machine on some infrastructure somewhere. It's another computer that is running. And that machine, in the context of Django, is some, something that will run a Python web server. And what a web server does is its job is, is fairly simple. It listens for a request in HTTP and issues a response. So there are popular examples out there that we will talk more about that are web servers. And some of them are GUnicorn or UWSGI or the popular Apache web server using the ModWSGI module. All of these things are capable of running Python applications. So the web server, its job is to listen for requests and translate that into a format that can be used by a web application. And Django is exactly that web application. The format it, it goes over is something called WSGI, which stands for the Web Server Gateway Interface. And the details of that are not very important right now, but it, it's just a universal inter interface that can be used between a Python web server and a Python application like Django. So when the request reaches the Django application, it's Django's job to respond to it. Django can do many things while responding, but at its core, it has to handle a few things. It has to handle URLs. We talked about how the URL goes out there, and if you look at a URL, something like mysite.com, there is often more after the .com or the .org. It's slash about, slash my app, whatever it is. That part of it is usually referred to as a path. And those paths are what Django is actually caring about responding to. So Django has to define what URLs it can respond to. So maybe it's an about page, maybe it's a contact page, who knows, whatever, it depends on what your application does. But Django is configured by you, the developer, to respond to certain URLs. And the second part of, that you have to do as your job is to write the code that will power those URLs. And those URLs, they have to do one thing, ultimately. They have to return a response. Whether that response is a web page or an image or anything else, that is up to you and what, you, what decisions you make. So Django helps a lot by providing a bunch of supporting code to make that possible. So if you have to store data in your application and you need to put it in a database to do that, Django can give you the tools to pull that data out of your database so you can send that back to your user. Or maybe you need to check who the user is and check their permissions and check that they're actually allowed to even use your website. Django supplies the tools to do that too. Or maybe you need to accept input from users and store that into a database. So you need to build out web forms. Django supplies tools to make that possible too. There's also a built-in admin interface. So if you need to be the person behind the scenes, checking on data, adding new stuff, modifying things, doing all sorts of administrative kind of work, Django provides tools for that as well. There's so many other parts that are there that we're going to explore over the course of this podcast. And I'm just listing a few, for example, so you get an idea of what it does. But ultimately, Django's job in this whole process is to listen for URLs, hand them off to the code that you write, and your code is responsible for sending a response back that will get to the user's browser. So where does Django fit into the web application ecosystem? What kind of framework is it? What, is it? what are other things that you might consider if you weren't using Django? Philosophically, Django is a batteries-included framework. So what that means, and it's similar to Python in this regard, is that there are lots of pieces included for you out of the box. These pieces do all sorts of things. They're wired together in a consistent way so that 
you get a single package to build an entire web application yourself. If you're going to compare this to other languages or web frameworks, you might compare it to something like Ruby on Rails in the Ruby ecosystem. Or you might want to compare it to Laravel in the PHP ecosystem. Both of them have similar philosophies of providing you with a fairly full experience to make a website. Django's built-in experience is focused on something called server-side rendered. And what that means is most of the work happens on the server. So the request comes in, all of the processing happens, and a full response, like perhaps a full web page, is sent back to the user so that it can be displayed on their page. This is in contrast to something called a client-side rendered framework. And you might have heard of these. They're often JavaScript tools like uh, React or Angular or Vue.js or Ember. All of these tools operate in a model where the browser downloads a bit of JavaScript first and then will make calls to some other backend service to make the web application work. Um, at its core, I think that the Django model is simpler in that regard because there are fewer moving pieces. There's not a client that sits in the web browser and a backend to support it. Uh, there's just a single unit. You talk to Django and it does everything, which is a, a nice way to start. So that's an introduction to Django. In the next episode, we're going to explore URLs, explore that entry point into a Django app. We need to explore how to describe URLs that your Django app will handle, or how to group different related sets of URLs together. We will also look at how you can extract information out of URLs to use in your own code. So that concludes our first episode. It was meant to be short on purpose to give you an idea of what we'll be doing in the future, and I didn't want to overwhelm you at the start with a bunch of sample code and dig right into the details. Full show notes for this episode are available at www.mattlayman.com slash Django Riffs slash one. Thanks for listening to this episode of Django Riffs. You can follow the show at DjangoRiffs.com. If you have something to share, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is MBLayman or follow the Django Riffs handle to keep up with the show. If you've enjoyed the show, please rate or review on iTunes, Spotify, or from wherever you listen to podcasts. Your rating will help others discover the podcast, and I would be very grateful. Django Riffs is supported by listeners like you. If you can contribute financially to cover hosting and production costs, please check out my Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash mblayman. The theme music for Django Riffs is Open Roads, used with permission from Purple Planet Music. I hope you'll join us next time to learn more about Django. Take care.